I'm Rich Roberts. I work at, for the Professional Examination Service, which is a New York-based uh, company. We build psychological assessments, and the one that I'm particularly interested in building at the moment is a measure of social and emotional learning. It's important for a number of reasons. Um, let's put it this way. Uh, I think people have changed their work habits. Um, we don't spend as much time in the past as, as we did in the past with kids, right? We, we're working all the time. Uh, once upon a time, you would assume you could get these things from your home. That's not happening anymore. It's, uh, so it's become something that has to be inculcated, we believe, in curriculum. It's not standalone from curriculum, it's got to be built into the curriculum. And there have been various studies showing that if you build these types of curricula, you'll get a return on investment that's about 11 to 1, which is a lot of uh, value, particularly for underserved people, right? People who have problems, maybe. Uh, socioeconomic problems, socio socioeconomic stresses. So this has just made it an incredible area, a very vibrant area, and unfortunately though, people can't agree on the terminology. It's a big, big problem. What we're doing to promote social and emotional learning is a little unique in the sense that what we're building is an assessment. And, and um, people say this all the time, what is measured is treasured, right? You don't measure it, unfortunately, educational systems around the world don't necessarily take it seriously. But what we've built is an assessment of these social emotional skills, but it's more than an assessment because it has feedback and action plans that get given back to the kids. And beyond that, there's also a teacher playbook that we're developing that maps correctly onto the assessment, which is a kind of a unique way. So we're calling it a formative non-cognitive assessment system. Well, by formative assessment, what it means is that you actually uh, make the assessment event kind of a learning thing as well. So we have what are called situational judgment tests, which are just little scenarios. And the scenarios say maybe measure your teamwork, right? Um, and when you feed back and the student says to you that, you know, this is their response to this scenario is that, for example, that they're not a good team player, I then can tell them. What, what they're doing wrong. And, and by doing this, you can actually improve, the argument is that you would improve their teamwork. Well, I think one of the, the most important domain, well, for people to really take it seriously across the globe, it's gonna be good measurement that people like the OECD go, that is a meaningful difference between two countries. At the moment, we're not there yet. And until we get there, I think it's gonna be a little problematic, but we're gonna work on it. No, it's not about uh, making kids um, behave in the same way, react in the same, make, making them the same vanilla uh, kind of uh, entity. It's not about that at all. What it is actually, if you think about it, there are five, six main characteristics that have, that still allows infinite amount of variation. You can do your math. The big five is what, what I'm gonna talk about. And the big five is uh, related to actually analysis of dictionaries describing people. Um, there are terrible words that are gonna hear and we, we, so we give them market facing labels as well. First is conscientiousness, okay, which is really your work ethic. The second is agreeableness, which is your teamwork and cooperation. The third is called neuroticism, and it's because it's based in an old idea, but that's really your resilience. The fourth is openness to experience, which is really like your intellectual curiosity. And the fifth is extroversion, introversion. And these five things, for the most part, describe uh, any human being. It gives you a good way of working out how to interact with other human beings.